Hello YouTube, my name is Zach and I'm back with another video on The Voice. So it's been a few days since I did the last video and I've had some time to sort of contemplate how I wanted to go about this one. Um, and I did some thinking and I decided that rather than go into all of the various questions that I had about, oh, is the singer good, is the singer bad, that kind of thing, I would rather sort of set a foundation as to what my entire voice philosophy is and sort of give you all an idea of sort of what to expect from the types of uh, commentary that I'm going to provide. I believe that that's more important than just jumping right in and saying, oh, this guy does this good, this guy does this poorly, the, you know, that kind of thing, because I feel like you all are going to gain more from it if you have an understanding of where I'm coming from when I say things. <clears throat> so, uh, to start out a little bit, uh, as you can see, I have uh, the great Pavarotti himself, or Pavarotti himself, on my screen, and uh, he is, this is kind of a low-quality video. I'm not actually going to play the video because I don't, I'm new to this whole, like, YouTube video thing, so I don't know what the rules are as far as, like, playing audio from other recordings, and I don't want to, um... I don't want to get like a strike on my account when I'm brand new and I don't I don't really know how this works. But if you're interested, if you look up Nessun Dorma um, from Pavarotti's performance, uh, Los Angeles, 1994, uh, you can actually see this same recording. And I've got this paused at a particular moment. Now I'll go in depth and explain a little bit more why in a moment. So fundamentally, my philosophy to singing is that it doesn't matter what style you sing. It doesn't matter what idiom of musicianship or sound you're trying to create. What matters is health. And in the vocal realm, health is dictated by how sustainable your technique is. And Pavarotti in particular is an incredible example of vocal health and sustainability. And I don't just know this from studying him. I know this because when I was in college, a man by the name of Jeffrey Wells, who used to be a Metropolitan Opera singer, came and performed a workshop for our voice department. And in the workshop, part of what he did was put up on a wall, he put these... Um, uh, slideshows that were it was sort of like a PowerPoint but it was like a slide sl slideshow that was like on a I guess it was projected and he didn't necessarily use PowerPoint I don't know if it was like a video he pre-prepared pre or what but basically what he did is he put on the wall projector with some speakers and he showed examples of other Met singers famous metropolitan singers with whom he had performed and worked and demonstrated examples of how even some of the you know classically most trained singers in the world have technical flaws and things that have caused them to shorten their careers and things that are damaging to their voices. But he, he said that Pavarotti is the only singer he had ever encountered in his entire career. And he was, I, I'm sure he's 60 at this point, I would imagine. He's, he's, uh, Jeffrey Wells is either in his mid to late 50s or his 60s. I'm, I'm not exactly sure which. Um, but he said Pavarotti is the only singer he'd ever encountered with flawless technique. Now, what does that mean when you say flawless technique? And what does that mean in comparison to a pop singer? Like, why would an opera singer say that another opera singer has flawless technique and say no one else does? The key to understanding technique is a freedom, an ease of use of voice, and a lack of tension in the body and in the singing sound. And this is a very blurry picture, I know, unfortunately. It's just the quality of the recording. But in this, by looking at Pavarotti's face, it's pretty indistinguishable as to what pitch he's singing. Um, you know, is he singing loudly? Is he singing softly? His face looks very neutral, which means that up here, you see there's no tension. His head, his forehead is perfectly stable he's not like pushing it all up like this his neck is stable his cheekbones are stable it's all very smooth like he doesn't have jaw tension everything is very relaxed and if you go to this point in this video it's at about 125 you'll find that he's actually seeing the highest note in the piece and he's sustaining it right now and it's as high as you're going to hear a male singer with no head voice involved at all um 
it's not the highest, but it's it's about as high as you're going to hear a tenor sing without going into head voice in some capacity and keep something healthy and sustainable. And I, I don't know what the pitch is. I'm trying to think. I don't have perfect pitch, so I kind of have to figure this out on my own. Mm, whatever that note is, an octave up. So let's see. Let me look it up. <laughs> It's a B. So he's singing a B on, and I know I was a tiny bit flat, but I was just singing the best that I could recall in my head. So apologies to those of you with perfect pitch out there. Uh, so he was singing a B uh, on the treble clef, which, um, uh, of course, is the third line uh, in chest voice. And it's as free and as easy sounding as anything you're going to hear him do. That is the hallmark characteristic of, of good technique, a lack of tension freedom and Pavarotti did it better than anybody so why are those things so important they are important because tension causes extraneous usage of muscles muscles that don't need to be engaged to make things happen it's just like if you're if you're lifting weights and I'm not a big bodybuilder or anything like that but I know a little bit about form if you're lifting weights right and you are trying to have good form in your arms, you may engage your core muscles, you may engage your body, but if you're lifting, like if you're doing curls, you're not gonna sit here and flex your, your calf at the same time. It doesn't make any sense. The only reason you would do something like that would be if you were straining and your entire body would, it would be engaged, and at that point you'd be out of form. The body is very similar when it comes to singing. When you are engaging muscles that don't need to be engaged, you are putting yourself outside of the optimal scenarios to cause the voice to work. So how does this all apply to my teaching method? When I take voice students, my entire philosophy, my entire approach is to chip away at the bad habits. I take stock in their singing and I listen for things that I know are unsustainable and unhealthy. So what kind of things do I listen for? Well, first off, uh, I'm going to be listening for tension in the sound. And so you can hear that. Like if, if I tighten my jaw up, you can really hear that sound. And if you touch the bottom of my mouth, you can feel that it's very tight. And that would mean that I'm really flexing these muscles underneath the jaw. And that's really bad for you because it stifles this whole mechanism. Part of singing is lip shape, mouth shape, tongue position, how if your soft palate is raised, all these various things affect how your voice sounds. And if your jaw is tight, then that takes this whole half of your mechanism and makes it useless. So I listen for tension in incorrect places. I listen for breath support. And I'm probably going to make an entire video on the process of breath support and the diaphragm. The reason I'm not doing that today is because I want to make sure that I've got all of my science down before I make that video because it is a very scientific, biological concept. And while I can teach you to sing using your diaphragm and breathe using your diaphragm, I don't know all of the intricate like interactions in the body that cause it to happen the way that it does. I just know how to do it. So I don't, I don't want to give something false. If I'm going to create videos, I want to make sure that they're accurate and as informative to you all as possible. So... Uh, that's kind of why I'm going to hold off on the whole diaphragm thing. But I listen for breath support. I listen for um, whether they are singing comfortably within their appropriate registers. And what I mean by that is like, is, is a baritone trying to sing something that's beyond his chest voice in his chest voice rather than moving it into his falsetto. Um, falsetto is your head voice in case you don't know this sound is a falsetto sound and it obviously has a, a different quality and characteristic than my speaking voice which is more robust and thicker and darker and I'm a baritone in case you didn't notice already but that's sort of uh, the kind of thing I listen for in that regard like if I if I get a baritone that's like pushing really hard to sing above where they're capable of singing in their chest voice I'll help them move that into falsetto um, women do the same thing if if they're pushing from their chest, they're belting when they should be moving up into their head voice, up into their high range. I'll help them develop that. And those are the types of basic things that are unhealthy. Um, you know, different forms of onsets. I talked about subglottal pressure, too much subglottal pressure, too much air covering the sound, just basic fundamental things like that. And once I strip away those bad habits that are just immediately destructive to the mechanism, then we start honing in on like vowel usage and creating a legato sound or, you know, specific exercises that, that, ex that, that, um, that work on elements of 
singing technique, which I'll get more into in the future. Um, but my approach first is to strip away the bad habits. I tell all my students, like I have some people that want to sing country. I have some people that want to sing rock. I don't do screaming and I don't do rap because they aren't really the same. Some rap has singing in it, uh, but rap is more akin to speak singing where when they do speak, it's more like uh, specifically tailored to the speaking sound which is kind of how you're supposed to sing, but when the emphasis is more on the speech than the singing, that's when I start kind of drawing the line of, of it not being in my realm of expertise. And I don't do screaming because screaming will destroy your voice. Um, you're not going to convince me otherwise. I plan on making an entire video on this subject alone, but to summarize it, there is no method to screaming that's safe, no matter what anyone tells you. We'll talk about that another time, because I imagine that's going to be a controversial video. But um, I don't want you guys to hate me yet. <laughs> that's that's another thing. I'm, I, if, if you guys really want me to critique and break down your favorite singers, I'm probably going to say some things that you don't like. So be ready. And that goes on to kind of a point I made in my last video. Just because you aren't a technically sound singer does not mean you're not a good singer. Just like not being a... Uh, uh, you can be technically sound and not be a good singer. There's kind of a conversion, uh, convergence, I should, convergence, a convergence of the two that has to happen to make what I believe are excellent singers. So um, just because I think that someone has terrible technique doesn't mean that they can't be an effective singer. It's two, two trains of thought. So, you know, if I have something bad to say about your, your favorite singer, that doesn't mean I'm saying they're bad, a bad singer. It just means that there's technical elements that I don't like. So I have students that... Uh, come from all different genres, you know, sing uh, of singing from, you know, class. So people want to be classical singers, people want to be country singers, rock singers, whatever. And what I tell all of them is that I just want to teach you the healthy, safe way to do it. That lets me know as a voice teacher that if you follow my instructions, you'll be singing when you're 50. And that's what I want. I want you to be singing when you're 50. Now, if you take my lessons and you take my instructions and you throw it all out the window on your own, at least I know that you made a conscious decision doing it. And I feel much better knowing that my students can make those kinds of decisions and they know they're stepping into dangerous singing territory or bad habits and they know how to avoid it if they so chose. That's my whole philosophy behind it. I listen to all sorts of progressive rock and metal and I listen to... Um, yeah, I listen to classical music. I also listen to some rap music. I listen to um, more, like some pop music. I mean, I, I listen to a, a lot of different music, and I hear singers with absolutely horrendous technique. I see singers all the time whose technique could be so easily fixed, but they refuse to. One of the most uh, one of the most prevalent major examples of this would be Adele. Adele is very young. As a matter of fact, I don't even think that I'm, I'm 31. I don't even think I think she's a little younger than me. Um, and her voice has been ravaged because she smokes, which you can't do and sing effectively. Sorry. She drinks, which you can't do and sing effectively, at least to any extensive amount. A little bit of alcohol every now and then won't kill you, but people who say that uh, drinking and that helps them sing better, it might help you forget about the pain involved of hitting certain notes. You're not, your body isn't really equipped to hit, but it doesn't make your voice function better at all. It does actually the opposite effect, which we could talk about in the future, but essentially it, it's a, it dries you out and that's never a good thing. Um, but Adele smokes, she drinks, um, and she ignores her voice teachers that try to help her. And she's had hemorrhages. She's had vocal surgery. And she's a shell of what she used to be. She's a great singer. She's a great performer. But she's probably lost something forever because of her sort of slapdash approach to singing. Which is, that's the, actually the exact word that some of her instructors abuse. She takes a slapdash approach to protecting her voice. Another thing that I check on with uh, my students is like... Uh, hygiene vocal hygiene like how do they eat how do they drink now there's um, you know there are some singers that can eat a big mac and come in and like kill it you know and that's that's great but one thing universally is that you need to be drinking water so if you if you have any questions about what you can do to help your voice in that sense just drink more water the hot tea and honey thing like some of those are okay but a lot of that stuff's like wives tales a lot of it is not as effective as as what people might lead you to believe um i'm not necessarily a um huge advocate of of all these other things i think water's the best and all this like 
uh, I can't remember, vocal zone, I think it's called, the stuff that like makes you not feel pain. No, 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 no good. You don't want that stuff because pain is an indicator from your body telling you, stop. I can't do this. You're making me do something I'm not capable of doing. So by giving yourself things to ignore that sensation, you are actively hurting yourself. So do not do that kind of stuff. Anything that's like throat coat, stuff that t- make, takes away the pain, no good. Uh, you probably shouldn't be drinking lactose of various kinds before you sing. Um, anything that's going to really heavily weigh down the mechanism is probably not good. So, you know, these are the kinds of things I talk with my students about. That doesn't mean you can't drink milk or eat ice cream. I just wouldn't drink half a gallon of milk before you get on stage. You're probably going to have a hard time. Um, so that's the kind of things that I look at fundamentally with my students. And then I kind of take them more catered into the, uh, the direction they want to go. And if they don't know what they want to do, I kind of teach them just classical until they decide, just so I can make sure that I'm giving them foundationally solid things. Um, so that is fundamentally what I do as a voice teacher. I don't, um, I don't try to steer people in a different direction, and I definitely take a, I take a varied individualistic approach. I don't teach everyone the same way. I use similar exercises and what I'm probably going to do one of these days is record a series of warm-ups that I know are good. Like there's a lot of really junky warm-ups on YouTube outside and that's that's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this because I see that there is a niche that has not been filled. At least not been filled in a way that that is I think honest and not self-serving. I do this because I love it. I don't go, I didn't, this idea to even do this kind of came in a whim because of the, you know, the, that discussion on the on the other video. I, So it's not like I have some game plan to make myself a millionaire by giving like these one size fit all singing lessons on YouTube. I just want to give some honest, truthful um, advice from a professional that deals with this every day and sees the struggles that singers go through. And I still work on my voice myself. So these are the, that's kind of my attitude. I'm in this just to, to be helpful. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to try to get you guys to pigeonhole yourselves into a certain sound. I'm going to give you honest feedback, and I'm going to try to give you exercises and ideas that I know are healthy and safe. So that's sort of my philosophy, and that's all I wanted to do in this video. I know that I don't that this isn't like specifically tackling one subject. I just wanted you guys to know where I'm coming from. My next video, I haven't decided if I'm going to do like why screaming's bad for you or if I'm just going to give some like maybe a primer on breathing and why it's so important. Uh, maybe into the actual function of the voice. Tell me in the comments whether you would prefer me to do something more um, critical or if you want me to give something more instructive. Um, I, I, I would I don't really have a preference either way. But I do want to make sure that you guys are engaged by this. uh, And I want you all to feel like you have something that you can sort of fall back on. Um, I do want to potentially have something in in place where I could, you know, give like like a voice lesson and record it. And then show it to you all. That's the kind of an idea I had in mind. So if you have any ideas on how I can do this better for you, like something that you would like to see, tell me. Because this is... You know, I'm doing this because I love it, and this is my passion, and this is what I do for a living. I'm doing it because I'm I'm at home and I got nothing else to do, and I enjoy talking about this and analyzing and thinking about it. So, you guys, let me know what I can do to help you all with your singing and help you all with your understanding. And I will definitely get into the the critique videos. And eventually, I was thinking maybe I could also do some like reaction videos, like where I listen to a singer and give you some real time feedback. So, if you have something like like a, a recording, like a live recording, you want me to see or something of that effect, I can potentially do that as well. I probably won't do that yet, but just be thinking about it. So anyway, uh, thanks for checking out my video. I hope you guys made it all the way through. Um, Feel free to like and subscribe if this is something that you're interested in, you want to learn more about, because I do plan on doing this somewhat regularly at this point. And uh, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments, like something that I can answer privately or directly to you. Um, I don't, I don't know if YouTube has a private message feature. I, I don't really use it to any for anything other than watching videos. So, um, also, if you have any tips on how I can improve these videos, like just visually effects that kind of thing. I know there's some background noise because I have a window unit in my room. So, I mean, I, I want to fix that, but it also gets sweltering hot in here. So, um, if you have. <clears throat> If you have any suggestions like that as well, please let me know, and I'd be more than willing to take it all into consideration. Anyway, thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will talk to you again soon.